Home Assistant packages are another special way of grouping and documenting your manually created YAML entities that allow you to group different entity types, scripts, and automations related to a particular device, area, topic, or function all in a single YAML file. In this video, I'll cover what makes packages unique, some of the pros and cons of packages, and how to enable and create your own packages within Home Assistant. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. I did a previous video on splitting out your Home Assistant configuration to better organize your manually created YAML entities. In that video, I talked quite a bit about the main configuration.yaml file, some requirements of YAML, and also the actual process of how to move your YAML from one file to another. If you're not familiar with any of these concepts, I really recommend that you watch that video first and I will throw it up here and leave a link to it down in the video description. This video is going to assume you at least have some of that basic knowledge already. Home Assistant packages offer yet another way to organize your manually configured YAML entities. It has some disadvantages and some advantages and I'll talk about those along the way. But for now, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how Home Assistant packages are created and used and how they differ from a split configuration. And just a quick recap, when we're talking about split configuration, that allows you to take things out of your one great big configuration.yaml file and split them out into individual YAML files. So you can take all of your sensors, all of your switches, all of your lights, whatever else you might have, split those out into individual YAML files that are included in the main configuration.yaml. This definitely helps make your configuration.yaml a little more manageable and can make it easier to find and edit your entities later on. But there is at least one problem with split configuration that packages can help solve. So for example, if I take a look at my garage lights, my automated garage lights, it consists of a number of different types of integrations. I might have a few binary sensors, some manually defined MQTT entities, a couple of different types of helpers, some automations and some scripts. So now if I want to go back and I want to make changes or modify or update my garage light automations or processes, I might actually have to go and open up multiple YAML files because they're all split out. I might open up, have to open up five or six different YAML files just to work on my garage lights. This is where packages can be really handy. When I use a package, I can define a single YAML file, say for example, garagelights.yaml, and I can include all these different types of integrations or entities in a single file. So I can have binary sensors mixed in with MQTT sensors. I can have all my helpers and my automations and scripts all in one big file. Now this might seem like an ideal way to organize your manually configured YAML entities, but it isn't necessarily all rainbows and unicorns. I'll circle back to what are some potential issues with using packages after we take a look at how to implement them. Now there are some unique rules and structure around the use of packages. In all of your other configuration styles, either one big configuration.yaml or a split configuration, a top level integration or domain may not be repeated across all of your configuration files. So for example, if you've got a configuration.yaml and you have a sensor section and you've added a few sensors there, then maybe a switch section, and then you try to add another sensor section, that's not going to work. It's going to kick up an error. Sensor can only appear one time across all of your files. So really you have a couple of choices. Put all of your sensors under one header or split those out into their own YAML file and use an include statement in your main configuration.yaml. Now there are a couple of minor exceptions to this rule, and I covered that in the split configuration video, where you can, if you're using include statements, have more than one include statement by putting a unique identifier on each of the domain. But as a general rule, you can't repeat these sections. This is where packages differ. In the terms of packages, if you have multiple packages, each package can contain its own integration section. So I can have a sensor section in package one, and I can have a sensor section in package two. And this is true whether we're talking about sensors or switches or input booleans or automations or any of those top level domains, they can now be repeated between packages when you're using multiple packages. But there is one other thing that applies regardless of the configuration style you're trying to use, is you can't duplicate an entity name or ID across all of your configuration files. So for example, you cannot have something like a temperature sensor named living room temperature defined more than once, regardless of whether it's a standard configuration, split configuration, or a package. 
And again, we'll sh I'll show how this might be a potential issue when you're using packages shortly. But first, let's take a look at a couple of my actual packages in Home Assistant. Okay, here in my Home Assistant configuration, I've created a folder for all of my packages, which I recommend that you do. So I'll come down and find my packages folder. And here are all my different packages. Since we were looking at the garage lights, let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So this is everything to do with my garage lights or my garage lighting system. You can see I've defined a binary sensor section for my binary sensors. I have an MQTT section for my MQTT sensors and switches. I have a couple of different types of helpers in here with input booleans and timers. And then I have all my different automations and scripts related to my garage lights. So if I need to work on or want to make a modification to the garage lights, all of the entities, automations, and scripts related to garage lights are in this one package. Let's just take a quick look at another one here. Let's take a look at the basement matrix because it has a whole lot of stuff in it too. So here's the basement matrix. Notice again, it's got its own dedicated sensor section. If I scroll down through here, it's going to have a whole bunch of MQTT entities as well. And I note that if you're not using a particular type of integration, so I'll come down here because there are a number of different helpers. I've got input booleans and I've got some input numbers. But if I'm not using something like input numbers, I don't need to include that section in the package. I only need to include the integration for the entity types that I'm going to put into my package. But there are a number of different helpers in here, including some text input helpers, and then I get down here and of course I have all of my automations and scripts. But everything I need related to my basement matrix is all defined within this one package file. Okay, so say you do want to enable packages and use those in Home Assistant. Now I'm going to assume here again that you've created a folder. That's where you're going to place your packages. I call mine packages. You can call it whatever you like. But in your main configuration.yaml file, you're going to need to put another include statement. Very top of your configuration.yaml, you probably have a home assistant section. It contains things like your country and your time zone. And then that will be followed by all of your different integration types, your automations, your switches, your sensors. To use packages, we just need to put in another include statement. In this case, it's packages include dir named and then the name of the folder. Now, I talked about the different type of include statements in my other video on splitting the configuration, but packages are considered dictionaries or mappings. So that's why we're using the named. So we're saying include a directory of dictionaries or mappings in a folder called packages. Now, there are a couple of key differences in this particular include statement over the ones you might do when you're just splitting out your configuration. First of all, this is actually indented by two spaces. The reason why is this is not a actual integration or a domain. It's actually telling Home Assistant that you want to use packages as part of the Home Assistant configuration. So we need to indent that by two spaces. If you make that fully left justified like your other include statements, it will not work. The other difference here is that packages is plural. And like your other include statements or integrations that are singular, like switch instead of switches or sensor instead of sensors, packages is actually plural. So we need to end it by two spaces, use packages plural, and then use an include dir named, and then the folder where all of our packages are going to be stored. Once you do that, you can start creating your packages in that folder. When you restart Home Assistant, those will be picked up as part of your configuration. Now, as I mentioned, packages come with some pros and cons. So let's take a look at those next. So these are some pros and cons that I've experienced or what I think based on my own personal experience, as I've moved everything out of split configuration almost solely to packages, and I did that a couple of years ago, and having lived it, here are some things I see as both the pros and the cons. When it comes to the pros, it is nice because I can group a lot of entities, automations, and scripts together. And again, that can be around any, any topic. Like you saw, I had one based around my matrix clock that had a whole bunch of entities and a whole bunch of automations and scripts. I can put that in one file or it can be around a particular area or room in your house, like your living room, or it could be something like my garage lights. So you can really group these things any way that you want, but it's nice to be able to put all those types of entities, scripts, and automations into one file. It does allow you to repeat those domains or integration as needed for each of your packages. And do note that this can coexist with your other configuration types. You can have packages and split files and things still in your base configuration.yaml file. 
and it can make it easier to share a project online with somebody else. So for example, my stair lighting system, I put all of everything with the stair lighting into one package. Instead of having separate files for input booleans and timers and motion sensors and WLED, that's all included into one package and it makes it a little bit easier to share. Now, that's not necessarily the only way to share and it's not really a substitute for something like blueprints. Either way, it's probably still going to require the user to either split things out of that package if they're not using packages, and they're probably going to have to rename some entities regardless. But now let's take a look at a few of the cons here. This doesn't resolve the issue that natively integrated devices still aren't going to be part of your package file. If you've got something that's a native Zigbee integration or ESP Home or MQTT, you can't define an entity twice, so it's not going to be able to be part of your package. And since entities can't be duplicated, you might have some sort of entity that is going to be shared across a couple of different packages that you might create. So you have to figure out exactly where you're going to put that shared entity. And do note it can be time consuming to migrate with a lot of possibilities for errors because you're copying and pasting, you're adding spaces, you're removing spaces. So there are a lot of potential errors there as you migrate or in some cases, which I've been considering, migrating out of packages back into a split configuration. So let me try to explain a couple of these cons with some examples. So let's say I'm working with a split configuration and right now I want to focus on sensors. So I've got my include statement in my configuration.yaml file. That also means I have a sensors.yaml config file split out. I do note I also have defined a thermostat or climate, and I've left that in my main configuration.yaml file because I only have one, but it probably has some sensors as part of that integration as well. Okay, now maybe I've defined a few packages, maybe one around everything in my living room, another one to do with environment in my home, and then maybe I even have one things around mornings because I want to have the thermostat change when I get out of bed in the morning. So all that's well and good. But then let's also say I've got some Zigbee devices that are natively integrated through the Zigbee integration. So maybe I've got a few different temperature and humidity sensors that are Zigbee devices. Then let's say I've also created a few of my own DIY devices and I've used ESP Home to maybe create a multi-sensor and maybe an air quality sensor. So I've got all of these different things that can contain sensors. So let's say I need to find the living room temp sensor because I need to make some kind of change or want to do something with it. Well, where in the heck is it? That could actually be defined or be coming from any one of these sources. It could be my main floor multi-sensor I defined in ESP Home. It could be my Sonoff temperature humidity sensor. It could be defined as a templated sensor in one of my packages somewhere, or it could be in my split configuration file, or it could be coming from that thermostat. Now, to be completely honest, you're still going to have this issue even if you're not using packages, but by adding packages, it makes yet another location where something can be defined and you have to go look for it. This may not seem like an issue when you first start out with Home Assistant, but once you get hundreds or possibly even thousands of sensors defined across all these different locations, finding it can actually be very difficult. The one thing you can do to help possibly identify where this particular sensor lives is you can go to your settings and your devices and services and go to your entities tab and search for your entity. Do note that the type of integration is listed for all those entities here, which is going to help you if it's something like ESP Home or Zigbee. If it just says sensor, well, that probably means it's going to be defined in one of your YAML configuration files somewhere, but at least it will let you know if something is part of a native integration. You also might try looking at the developer tools and look for your entity there. Sometimes you'll see something in the attributes that might help you out to identify where this sensor is coming from. Now I would love to, and maybe this would be a recommendation for the month of what the heck, but I would love it if the integration type could be added as an attribute for each entity right here in the developer tools. I don't know about the feasibility. I'm not a home assistant developer, but I would love to see that integration added right here as well. So let's flip this around and, and take a look at it from a different angle. So let's say I've got a split configuration. In this case, I'm going to take a look at timers and I've got a number of packages. Well, let's say I have, I want to create a do not disturb timer. Well, that do not disturb timer really needs to be used by multiple packages. So I can create this timer do not disturb entity, but where do I put it? Which one of these packages do I put it in? Because all four of them are going to use it. 
Well, I could put it in my main split configuration file and kind of consider that my global or my shared entities that might be used by multiple packages. But again, that kind of defeats the idea of having everything in one package. So there isn't a good answer. You can't create more than one timer do not disturb because every entity has to have a unique name. What I've opted to do personally is each of my packages contain a comment section at the top, and that comment section includes entities used by the package that aren't defined in the package. So for example, my garage lights use a couple of Zigbee sensors, a couple of ESP home devices, and in this case, right there, you see that timer do not disturb. And I'm putting in my documentation that that is defined in my voice.yaml package. So at least by when I open this up, thinking, okay, well, I've got this garage door sensor that works with my garage lights. I go to my garage lights.yaml. Oh, look, that's a Zigbee integration. So now I need to go over to Zigbee to be able to find, modify, or change that device. It's not an ideal solution, but it's the best one I've come up with for ways to still reference everything in a package, including those devices that might not be defined in that package and are defined elsewhere. Now, the process of moving your YAML over to packages is very similar to the way it was done with the split configuration. The only thing, again, we have to be aware of is this two-space indentation of our entities. If you recall, when we went to split configuration, we took all of our entities of a particular domain or integration type. In this case, I'm doing timers. We cut that out of there, put it into its own file, but recall that we had to remove those two spaces. Then back over in our main configuration file, we just simply put our include statement in there, restarted Home Assistant, and we were good to go. So if we do want to implement packages, we have to come back up here like I showed before, and we need to add our packages include statement. Remember that is indented two spaces. And in this case, it's going to use a folder that I've created called packages. Now let's say I've already got a package created for my garage lights, but now I want to take this garage motion timer out of the global timers.yaml file, and I want to move it into the package. Well, it's pretty easy to do. The first thing we need to do in our package itself is we do need to create a timer section. Once we have that, we can come over here and we can actually take just this timer entity out of the global package and we can come over here and we can paste it in. But note, now we need to go back and we need to add back those two spaces that we removed before. Of course, if you're coming directly from your configuration.yaml, those two spaces will already be there and you won't have to add them back. That's all there is to it. Now we simply save our files and we reload timers or we restart Home Assistant. These can eventually be split out into their own packages or you can leave them in the timers.yaml global file. What's nice about this is you can move things slowly as you create new packages and you can mix and match by having some things in a global split out configuration file and other things in a package. Just remember that you can't duplicate a name or an ID across all of your YAML. So Home Assistant packages offer yet another way to organize your manually created YAML entities in Home Assistant. The nice thing about packages is they're not all or none. You can have packages in combination with split configuration files and your main configuration.yaml file. Now me personally, I moved everything into packages and in hindsight, I probably would have left some things in their individual split configuration files and may revert back to that at some point in time just to make things a little bit easier to find in some situations. Now, if you're new to Home Assistant, you might think you're never going to need this. And as the UI editors get better and better, there is a little less need to go out and create manual YAML entities. But as your Home Assistant grows, there probably will become a time when that will be necessary for you. And it's better to have an organizational structure in place from the start than it is to try to split out hundreds or even thousands of entities that are in one great big main configuration.yaml file. So you might want to think about what organizational structure works best for you and go ahead and get that set up knowing that it's not permanent. You can go to a split configuration now and to packages later or from packages now and then back to a split configuration later. I'll be back down the road with more Home Assistant 101 videos. But until that time, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.